Tonight we are here with Ryan Fanon. Ryan is uh, right now the uh, Pelicans NBA G League affiliate team coach, head coach for the Erie Bayhawks. Although you can see he's not there anymore. He's no longer in, um, here in, in, um, in, in, in Pennsylvania. He's back home, right, Ryan? Back in Florida. Back in Florida. Uh, Ryan uh, was a member of the New Orleans Pelicans NBA Summer League staff. And obviously he then got named head coach for their G League. Um, he has coached Slovakia and Jerusalem and other places where I'm going to let him do that for uh, explain a little bit about that. Um, like I've been saying to everyone, Ryan, it's a pleasure for you guys to take your time and, um, and joining us in this, in this humble project that we're doing. I'm going to welcome um, our, I'm going to uh, talk in Spanish for a second so I can welcome all the people that are contacting us online. So, um, uh, Ed, Ed, oh, Edwin is right here. Edwin uh, has been going, um, contacting you um, in and out. So he's also here, but um, we've been talking. Um, eh, eh, queremos darle la bienvenida a Ryan Panón. Ryan es el coach eh, de la de la de la es el head coach de la liga de la NBA G League afiliada en aquí en Erie Pennsylvania, los Erie Bayhawks. Él también fue miembro del eh, grupo del coaching staff de los New Orleans Pelicans en la liga de de la NBA de, de verano. Eh, eh, Ryan ha tenido la oportunidad de, de dirigir tanto en Jerusalén como en Eslovaquia como en otras partes del mundo y hemos tenido el privilegio hoy en la tarde de hoy, en la noche de hoy, de tenerlo a él. Eh, eh, él va a trabajar eh, con nosotros el 3 y 2 pick and roll, eh, motion offense. Ryan, again, thank you and um, it's, it's on you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for, for having me speak. Uh, so I, I'm currently, as, as they said, I was uh, head coach in the G League for the Erie Bayhawks team. I've coached in Israel for Hapol Jerusalem, Germany, Slovakia, China, and some in South Korea, and uh, uh, college in the United States, high school in the United States. So I've been very fortunate uh, to travel all over the world and see uh, different style of uh, play. And uh, yes, one of my, I, I see a question here. One of my, my strength coach in Slovakia was uh, Tuck Taylor. Uh, so, so I see the question. Um, and I'm trying to have him be the strength coach in, uh, in the G League. But uh, I've been fortunate to, to be all around the world and work for two really high-level coaches, one uh, in Simone Pianjani, who's an Italian coach that used to coach the Italian national team, went to two EuroLeague Final Fours with Siena, coached in Fenerbahce in Turkey. He, he won eight straight titles, uh, six in Siena, uh, one in Jerusalem, one in uh, uh, Milano. He was the head coach of Armani Milano. And so coaching under Simone, uh, I learned a lot about four out pick and roll spacing and the way that the European teaches their movement, uh, their ball flow. And then I went to be a head coach in Slovakia. I had a lot of success and I got an opportunity to come back to Jerusalem and work for Oded Katash, uh, who's considered the greatest Israeli player ever, won a EuroLeague title uh, with Panathinaikos playing for Zeljako Bradovic and his career was cut short due to injury, only playing till 25, but he's considered a EuroLeague legend. And so they asked me to come back and, and be an assistant coach there. And I decided to leave being a head coach because Oded played a totally different style of play than what I believed in. You know, I believed in four out spacing, have to have a stretch four. In Slovakia, I, I would have been second in the NBA in three-pointers attempted behind the Houston Rockets that year. And Oded's style of play was he didn't care about stretch bigs. He wanted more bigs that could pass and decision-make. And so his entire philosophy was different from mine. And I thought going back to be an assistant coach would really challenge me and, and help me grow and either confirm my beliefs or expand my beliefs in, in the style of play that I liked. And so 
when he hired me and we were recruiting players, I was pushing for stretch fours, and he kept saying, we don't need bigs that can shoot. We need bigs that can pass. And, and that was what was most important to him. And so then when we got to Jerusalem and we talked about everything, you know, I was still trying to push, well, let's, you know, let's try to shoot a lot of threes. Let's play small ball. Let's play this way. And everything he kept telling me was trust the system. The system will be fine. And it was hard for me to imagine, even though we coached against him, uh, exactly how well the system works. And some of the advantages I, I think of this system, and I'll begin to pull up uh, my presentation. Uh, one second. Um. And so this is, you know, this is my email here. As, as you'll see, ryanpanone at gmail.com. Please feel free to, to take my email. If you decide you want a copy of this presentation and all of the videos that I use in it, just shoot me an email and I'll, I'll be happy to send it over to you, send over all the information. Uh, but when I got there, they kept talking about trust the system, trust the system. And the offense as I've titled it, is the Odeg Katash way of life because this is the, the system is over everything. And uh, when you're going through it, right, and you have to think of why run this offense, okay? And if anyone has any questions throughout it, don't hesitate to stop me and, and ask. I'll be happy to answer anything. But a big reason why to run this offense is – you know, in modern basketball, pretty much everyone wants stretch bigs. And as we know, depending on how many imports you can have or what the quality of the domestic players are, stretch bigs can be really expensive. And Odette has spent the majority of his career in low-budget clubs where he couldn't really afford stretch bigs. And so how do you play a modern style of basketball uh, – without modern style players. Modern style basketball meaning utilizing the three, playing very fast, playing up tempo, scoring a lot of points. When two out of five players on the floor can't shoot the three. And so that is what this offense is for. It's for when you have two bigs that you wanna to try to play together, maximize spacing when both can't shoot. And so Hapol Jerusalem had the greatest offensive season and the history of Champions League last year. It's a modern style of play without modern style players. No stretch bigs needed. It can fit teams from all levels, high school, college, pro, and all levels of pro. It gets the ball moving from side to side. Multiple players touch the ball, including bigs, and it's a high assist percentage offense. One positive thing about this offense is, as we all know, Bigs nowadays want to be guards, right? None of them want to post up. Everyone wants to shoot threes. Everyone wants to be a guard. They want to handle the ball, make decisions. So one advantage of this offense, when you have big guys that want to be guards but can't shoot the basketball, but they can handle, they can pass, and they can't shoot, this offense gives them some ownership, okay? And I think all the time uh, – most offense gives guards ownership. And I think one advantage of this is it gives bigs, uh, it gives bigs some of the ownership in the offense, which allows them to really buy into it. And as we all know, the more players that touch the basketball on offense, the harder they're going to play on defense, right? The, the ball on offense brings the energy on defense for a lot of players, okay? This offense generates high percentage offensive shots, rim finishes, rolls, drives, attacking closeouts, and high percentage threes because you generate a lot of catch-and-shoot corner threes off defensive strengths. And as we know analytically, especially from the NBA, right, your highest percentage shots are free throws, layups, and catch-and-shoot corner threes. And so this offense does a really good job of generating those shots. And then once you learn the system, all of your plays can flow into it, which you'll see throughout the video. You'll see baseline out-of-bounds plays, sideline out-of-bounds plays, half-court man-to-man plays that all have different starts but finish into the motion offense, the system. 
And you can utilize the same system to attack all pick and roll defenses, including switching and zone defense. You don't have to teach your players multiple offenses. And lastly, you can adjust the rules of the offense to the skill of your players. You can hide a weak perimeter player on offense or designate specific guard wings as DHO players slash pick and roll players. What do I mean? Let's say you have a wing that's not a good ball handler, so you don't want him to be a pick and roll player. You prefer him to play off DHO, so you would designate him as a DHO guy, not a pick and roll player. And then you can designate specific bigs as hard rollers or short rollers. So in Jerusalem, the year I was there, we had Amari Stoudemire, and we had Tayshawn Thomas, and we had Josh Owens, and then we had an Israeli uh, big that was uh, – all of them were non-stretch bigs. Well, Amari Stoudemire and Josh Owens were hard rollers, and Tayshawn and the Israeli big could be short roll guys. So you can kind of hide skills and utilize strengths of players in this. Okay, by the numbers, the last two years in Champions League. All right, Hapol Jerusalem was number one in offensive rating both years, number one in points per game, number one in effective field goal percentage this year, number three last year out of 32 teams, four in assists per game this year, number one in the season I was there. Okay, now this offense, the biggest part of this offense when we're talking about modern basketball, everything is predicated upon transition. Okay, in transition, transition equals race, space, and pace. In transition, we want to put pressure on the rim to stretch and stress the defense. We want to think race, space, and pace. Race the ball up the floor to put pressure on the rim. Stretch the defense with spacing deep to the corners. Stress the defense by playing with pace in the half court. The first big, it does not matter, four or five. Either one, rim races to put pressure on the rim. Guards are looking for hit-aheads to bigs and wings racing. Wings race for corner threes with spacing. The pressure on the rim from the racing bigs opens up the corner threes. Guards, if they cannot hit ahead, they push to score. They are aggressive. Bigs rim racing puts pressure on the rim. Wings spacing. Uh, to the corner stretches the defense, allowing guards to push to score and keep pressure on the second line of transition defense. We want to use the term race 20. Race the ball to the three-point line with 20 seconds or more in the shot clock. Late transition buckets develop with miscommunications when the defense is under duress. And then the more time that's on the shot clock, the more time you can get the ball side to side in the pick and roll motion offense. Okay, so here's, here's some video of it. As I said, if anyone has questions, don't hesitate to stop and ask throughout the portion of the, the video. So these are just some clips of transition. Make or miss, we want the bigs to rim race. A lot of people say run. We want to paint the picture to the bigs to race the floor. We don't want them to run. We want that mental image of racing. And here you can see it's our fours, it's our fives. It doesn't matter. First big go. Sorry, one second. I'll fix the volume. Okay, so these are just a bunch of clips, and these are in big-time important games. Okay, next, guards look for hit-aheads to wings. So you'll see here guards catching the ball without a dribble. They'll just catch. First thing they do, they look up the floor to pitch it. We want to catch and go. The ball is faster than the defense. Push it up the floor. Pitch it. A good statistic is to try to get 20-plus hit-aheads in a game. Then if the hit-ahead isn't there for the layup, guards, wings have got to race below the break threes. We want transition below the break threes. Those statistically are 40% three-point shots. Ryan, quick question. Yes. Um, they're asking the rim racing. Uh, it's only for four and five. So I'm going to say in Spanish. La, el irse rápido en, en carrera, en escapada. Es solamente para las posiciones cuatro y cinco. So we want the first big to rim race 
And then the wings can also run for layups, but we want the big just running in a straight line, rim to rim. So, la, la contestación es que queremos que el, el primer hombre grande, obviamente, eh, eh, corra, pero también a la misma vez queremos que, que las alas, los wings, también estén al frente para poder empujar la hora. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. Okay, so then if the bigs aren't open and the wings aren't open, like I said, we want the wings running for corner threes. And we want the guards to push the ball up the floor as much as possible to try to generate below the break threes. Now, if teams take away our rim running big and they take away our wings racing, we want the guards to push aggressively to score. Be aggressive. Don't walk the ball. Don't jog the ball. Push it hard to get to the rim to score. We never want the offense to relax. We want pressure on the defense at all times. Then, if you can't get all the way to the rim, we want you to get to the three-point line as quick as you can. Now, if you look here, the guard is at the three-point line with 21 seconds, okay? The defense is back pretty much. They're set. There's no offense advantage. But what we want, and this clip will show, we want 21 seconds to where we can run our half-court offense high pace to get the ball going side to side. And here you'll just see a clip, right? We have a, a mismatch in transition. We have plenty of time to try to attack the mismatch in transition and keep the ball flow with our offense. Next thing you'll see, when you keep the pressure on the defense, Late transition opportunities arrive. Here you'll see, right, four defenders are back. We got the ball to three-point line at 22nd. A late transition opportunity arrives because the guard gets to the three-point line as quick as possible. Same thing. Look, 21 seconds, nothing right there. Five defenders back. Later transition opportunity. Everything that we do – is about putting pressure on the defense. We want to put pressure on them for 40 minutes, 40 minutes of pressure on the defense. Here you can just see, look, late transition. Five guys are back, still in miscommunication. Easy layups. Then obviously you have the push right, that can flow into early transition threes. And then push for your three-point opportunities from the guards. If you've got good guards that can shoot it off the bounce. Okay. Now, the spacing, once you get through transition, okay, if there are no, you've raced the ball to the three-point line, there's no early, middle, or late transition scoring opportunities, we begin to flow into either a high pick and roll or a side pick and roll, depending on the floor balance. So the guard pushes all the way to the three-point line. You'll see in the first slide. If there's no early transition, we want to get to the three-point line, set our defender up, and that's when the five or the four comes and sets the middle pick and roll directly in the middle of the floor. And what Coach Katash will talk about, and we'll see clips of this, is 80% of pick and rolls to him should be re-screens. So here you'll see in the second slide, right, the four or five already came over on the first pick and roll. If we play a re-screen, he has to stay opposite the big. These two bigs, the first big and the second big, stay opposite each other. And then what we want is the floor balance. If, we, if the guard dribbles down and it's empty corner, it becomes a empty corner side pick and roll below the 45, below the free throw line extended. We want it deep. And then the big that was the first big down has got to lift early to the elbow, which we'll get through this. Okay, so now high pick and roll rules. And we're just going to start breaking down the high pick and roll. Then we'll break down the side pick and roll. And then we'll see it combine into the motion offense system. So high pick and roll rules. The offense can be started with a filled corner or empty corner. The goal is to get the ball to the three-point line with 20 seconds or less on the shot clock and flow into the offense. 
You want to be a threat at all times on offense. Okay, ball handlers rules in the pick and roll. One, know the floor balance and spacing. Is it empty corner or filled corner? This will determine where you bring the ball out of transition. Two, set your defender up. It's the signal for the big to come and screen you. Okay, three, look to reject the pick and roll. You want to try to reject the pick and roll almost every time. Why? Think about for us as coaches, when you're in your practice, how much time when you're working on your pick and roll defense do you work on what happens when a guard rejects the pick and roll? Even good coaches spend maybe 5% of their pick and roll defensive time working on what happens when the ball is rejected. A lot of coaches don't spend any time, right? And so if the defense is not prepared for failure, we want to put them in that position. Every defense is better rotationally when the ball handler uses the pick and roll, and they are worse when you don't. Second, if you try to reject the pick and roll and you play good defense, on the ball defense, you're now at a better angle to use the screen to rub that defender off on, on the screen or shoulder. Okay, so we always want to look to reject the pick and roll. Four, as the screener comes, have your head over your shoulder to read off-ball players. Too many guys, when that screen is coming, their eyes are directly to the sideline, right? We want to read the floor. We want to see, is there off-ball backdoor cuts, face cuts, slip opportunities? We want to read everything off the ball with our head over our shoulder. Five, know their pick-and-roll defense and personnel, okay? Defensive coverage and defensive personnel determines pace of play. What do I mean? If the defense is playing in a drop pick and roll coverage where they just sit the big in the middle of the paint, then you come off the pick and roll a little bit slower, right? Because you wanna keep the guard on your back for the hostage dribble to create the two on one with you and the roller attacking the big deep in the paint. Now let's say they're in a flat hedge. And personnel-wise, it's a slower big in the flat hedge, and you're a quicker guard. Now you can come off the screen faster to try to turn the corner and attack that slower big. Okay, so knowing their defensive coverage and their personnel will determine your pace of play as a guard off the screen. Six, come off the screen tight to a tight turn. It is your job to really fight for a tight turn off the pick and roll. Ideally, if they are not in aggressive coverage, you want your first step off the pick and roll with your toes and foot to the rim. If you watch most players against non-aggressive pick and roll coverage, okay, their first step with their foot is to the sideline. You want a tight turn to keep that defender on your back. Okay, so it's very important, all right? Seven. Your eyes sell lies. When you come off that pick and roll, okay, really good pick and roll guards are using their eyes to sell lies. They may look at the roller, so the weak side corner comes in to try to tag the corner to open up the corner three. They may jump in the air, and their eyes are on the corner shakeup man, acting like they're going to pass out for the three to hit the roller. Okay, eight, create the advantage attack to get two on the ball, nine, keep and use the advantage. Get off the ball quick. Once you get two on it, you've got to get off it or score it. You need, typically, max, two dribbles in a pick and roll. If you are taking three, four dribbles, that means the ball is in your hands and the defense is allowed to get back to their shell defense. Now, screener's rules. Number one for the screener, come without your man. Think of like a shooter setting up their defender before they come off a screen. That's what we want the big to do. We want him to set up his defender and come without him. Why? So we determine their pick and roll coverage. If they're trying to show or trap in the pick and roll and you come without him, they're now delayed, they're separation. So they can't show or trap the pick and roll. And if they do, they're going to be late, which allows all of the opportunities offensively. Okay. It is your responsibility 
to go get the guard, right? Don't, the guard isn't coming to you, you're going to get him. Two, race into the screen. Three, know who you are screening for. Are you screening for a non-shooter that teams are gonna try to go under? Are you screening for a guard that is better going downhill north and south or has good east-west speed? This can determine the angle of your screen, okay? Is it a guy that has hit two threes in a row off the bounce? So now what are they going to try to do? Showing the pick and roll to get the ball out of his hands. So knowing who you are screening for is very important. Four, know the opponent's pick and roll defense. Their coverage determines your pace of play. It determines if you hold the screen or get out of the screen. Meaning, if you know that they are showing in the pick and roll or trapping the pick and roll, you want to look to slip the screen or as soon as you make small contact, I mean the moment you hit them, you get out quick. If you know that they're dropping in the pick and roll, right, now you can hold the screen for one second, forcing the guard over, which allows the guard ball handler to put him in a hostage dribble. So knowing their defensive coverage determines how quick you get out of the screen as a big, okay? Five, no moving screens. You can always miss. If you're not sure that you're going to be able to create contact or if you're worried about getting a moving screen, you just slip the screen and rescreen. We want 80% of pick and rolls to be rescreens. Okay, six, know your role. Are you a hard roller or are you a short roller? Seven, race out of the screen with space. Because the guard is trying to tight turn, you have to banana roll. You don't straight line roll, okay? You want to race to roll. If you're a hard roller, then you want to roll to seal. If you're a, a short roll guy, you want to race into the pocket. Eight, read if you need to rescreen or Set a second screen. 80% of the time should be a rescreen or a second pick and roll. Nine, catch and read. So if you catch off a short roll or a hard roll, land on two feet, read the defense. Two quick passes beats any defense. Nine, if you go second side, so if you catch it off a short roll and you're going second side, you have to know your personnel. Is it a pick and roll player or a DHO player? Okay, now, first big rules. First big meaning transition big that race the floor. Number one, stay opposite of the screener. Two, look for deep seals on backboard cuts. Okay, so when you play the pick and roll and you cut underneath the backboard, your first option is a deep aggressive seal. Three, Know their pick and roll coverage and your personnel. Meaning, if they are hard showing or trapping the pick and roll, and the big that is setting the screen is a hard roller, then you must lift up to the elbow to create a passing line for the guard to pass you the ball. If they're showing in the pick and roll or trapping the pick and roll, and the big setting the screen is a short roller, you must stay deep to the baseline. So you have to know their defense and your personnel. Okay, very important. All right. Now, four, be on time. So if they show in the pick and roll and the big setting the screen is a hard roller, you have to be to that elbow on time to give the guard a release angle. Five, catch and read. Read the rolling big. Read the weak side corner. Read the throwback or the second side pick and roll. Six, race into your second screen. Now, corner rules for the guards that are in the corner, the guards' wings. One, stay in the corner. The max you can lift up is to the break unless there's a tactical reason to lift higher than the break. The reason why we want them to lift the break, number one, if you set the screen in the middle of the floor, okay, the distance to try to tag the screen is much farther than if it's a shake pick and roll played off the slot. Okay, so that extra one meter, four feet, three and a half feet, 
makes it a farther closeout, so there's no need to lift all the way to the 45. You would lift up to the 45 for two reasons. One, so the ball can see you. If the ball cannot see you, if you only lift max to the break, you can lift higher, reading the defense. Two, if it is a tactical reason, knowing how they're going to play pick and roll defense and you're doing it to create a shot, right? But if you stay below the break, you're still in position for a higher percentage three and for a second side pick and roll, okay? Two, if you catch the ball off a pass from the guard playing the pick and roll, be ready to shoot. Three, if you catch it from a big, okay, be ready to shoot first and ready to play a second side pick and roll after. Four, know who you are. If you are not a pick and roll player, make the simple play. Don't try to do what you can't do. Okay, now side wing pick and roll rules. Ball handler rules. Try to bring it below the 45 free throw line extended. Okay, this is something you'll see clips where we do it well or we don't do it well. You want to do this to maximize spacing with the side pick and roll and the second guard for the high pick and roll. Two, be a threat to eliminate ice pick and roll defense. Meaning, look to attack, look to reject. If you look to do that, they have to square you up. They can't jump on your high side to ice. Three, fight to turn when you come off the pick and roll before the elbow. Four, be ready for the early pass, easy pass to the guy to play the high pick and roll. The second pick and roll ball handler, the guard that is near the top of the key. One, start at the weak side slot to create spacing for the initial pick and roll and then slide to the top of the key. Two, when you catch the ball off the early pass, easy pass, be ready to catch and rip. So if you play the side pick and roll and you pass it to the guard for the high pick and roll, he cannot catch and hold the ball. He's got to catch and rip like it's a flare screen. There is no setup required. Lifting big rules. One, be on time. Know your reads on the catch. Okay, so if you lift up to the elbow and you receive the ball, in the first pick and roll, are they icing, switching, showing, or in flat defense? Okay, are they denying the guard for the high pick and roll? So you have to know your reads. Now, for the weak side corner, that is where you hide your worst ball handler, worst decision maker. Anytime you come down in transition and it is an empty corner, you want to tell your worst ball handler, worst pick and roll player, worst decision maker to run to the corner. This is his home. He stays there except he reads for cuts. Now, this is some video. As we're going through this, this is only the high pick and roll. These are literally – the reads break by break that we teach our guards. This is how we build the high pick and roll play. Number one, as I said, look to reject the pick and roll. Okay, so here you'll see it's kind of a set play. High pick and roll, reject, get to the rim and finish. Here will be reject into a pass. Okay, next, use the pick and roll. Okay, first read, we teach our guards, and we work a lot on it in our skill work, our pick and roll threes. Be ready to come off with proper footwork, proper balance for that pick and roll three. Okay, then we look to attack, get downhill to the rim. We want to play pick and rolls to score first, to get two on the ball. Okay, then we look for advanced passes. Okay, then we look for the quick roll, the short roll, early pocket passes. This offense requires early pocket passes. You'll see here, they're icing it, weaken it, bang, we come off. Okay, a little bit later pass. Early pocket. Big to big. In this offense, okay, you have to work from the preseason a lot on big to big play. It is predicated upon your bigs 
passing and playing with each other. Now, using the first big down. So this here is Amari Stoudemire. He rim run. Okay, he doesn't have anything. The first read that we teach him, deep seal. We want to come off it and hit him for deep seal layups. These are high percentage plays for layups and fouls. Okay, here you'll see right into the post. So this is how we get a lot of post ups, deep seals, layups for the first rim running big. This is a set play into the offense. Okay, then we want to teach them, if you don't get it off a seal, be deep back to the baseline for all of our dunker finishes. Ryan. Yes. I have a question um, from our one of our coaches says, uh, what do you do against a good ice PNR defense team? Like, be, like because so you, we, you're, you're, what you do against a good PNR defensive team because your bigs can't shoot? Oh, you're, you're going to see. So basically, we run a lot of rescreens, and you'll see the different ways that we attack it. So, right. Okay. So we're going to touch. Great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to when you play against aggressive pick and roll defense, so teams that show a lot, teams that switch the pick and roll, and teams that ice the pick and roll, how you beat it. Perfect. Uh, 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 quick here. Había una pregunta que decía que cómo él ajustaba el pick and roll. Eh, con equipos que, que, que saben defenderlo muy bien y que le quitan el tiro al hombre grande. Él me acaba de contestar que él, él un poquito más tarde va a tocar el, el, ese tema al respecto. Thank you, Ryan. No problem. So, okay, now, if you see here, we've got the first big down, and we look for that early pass, and we work on this all the time in skill workout. Big to big. Okay, so Bomberg from Germany, one of the top teams in Europe. You'll see we pick them apart in their pick and roll defense. But here, same thing, deep seal out of transition. We hit them, big to big pass. So this is where you can allow your bigs and you sell them on the offense because they get to be guards, right? So if you got bigs that, that want to be guards but they can't shoot, this is a good offense because it allows them to be decision makers. Now, this is just a perfect example of utilizing against pick and roll aggressive defense. So watch here. They show in the pick and roll. Amari Stoudemire hard rolls. The big that's underneath the defense lifts to the elbow, and we hit them big to big. Okay, same thing there, big to big. We flow into the offense, big, over the top to big. Okay, that's this is actually against two, three zone defense, which I have I have a whole segment of zone defense, right? Just so you can see what the reads are out of the offense. Okay, now high pick and roll with rescreen. These are the reads. Okay, so you can watch how our bigs rescreen. So we set the screen, we reject the rescreen. It's the same mentality when we use a rescreen. We use the first one. Okay, then we come off it, we reject it as they try to go under, pull up three. Now using the rescreen. And we do this in skill work. We have our guards come off the first screen, come back, rescreen, and work on these shots. That's literally how we drill it. So first pick and roll, second pick and roll, bang, get to the rim. Now, if I had to have a big, one of the big problems in the offense, one of the things that I hate, okay, and that you have to get your guys really good at, okay, here you'll see number 35, Tayshawn Thomas. As we're playing the pick and roll, Okay, and they're not in aggressive defense. He should be a little bit deeper to the baseline. So right now, what we typically will have do is as he's penetrating, 35 drops back to the baseline. Now, what you got to get your guards very good at doing in this offense, 
You got to get your bigs good at reading penetration to re-space, but you have to get your guards really good at fighting to the middle of the floor and what I call ball pickups. So if you watch here, watch the guard. The big swipes down. Watch how he picks the ball up over his hand to get to the rim to finish. And we drill all that in skill work. Okay, so now you got first pick and roll, and here's a good clip, right? They're being aggressive. Rescreen. So now if you notice, as, as you're saying, against good pick and roll defense, Tenerife was one of the best defensive teams in Champions League. So watch. And I've got more clips of this. See how they're denying? First thing we do, we go to a handback. They're aggressive. He's connected to the guard. He's on his hip. They're in good pick and roll decision making. So now we rescreen. Now look at the separation. He gets cracked on the screen. And that is how we create the advantage against good pick and roll defense. Notice 35. He's going underneath the backboard to open up that roll. Screen, rescreen. Watch the bigs underneath the defense. Now, Bomberg, okay, so this was a tactical reason. They were very, very good defensive team on the first pick and roll. Okay, so here, aggressive, good defense. Now we rescreen him. He's out of position. Now he lets Amari get behind him on the roll, which opens it up. Now you'll see, same team. Okay. First screen, you watch him. Look at the level of his drop directly in the middle of the floor, right? The guard has no advantage. The big, this big here is a hard roller. So we rescreen, and now watch what the big does. He overcommits to the guard, opening up the roll. Same thing here. Screen, rescreen, short roll, pocket pass, big to big. And so this is how you attack really good pick and roll defensive teams. And some of the advantages of the offense, right? A lot of big guys can play good pick and roll defense on one screen, but very few bigs can play good pick and roll defense on two, three, four pick and rolls in the same set. At some point, they will break down. Okay, now empty corner pick and roll reads. Number one, reject the pick and roll. Every time we want to try to reject it. Now here, watch. Okay, it's more of an ice, but we still want to attack, be aggressive, and have our bigs roll through the pocket. Okay, here you'll see reject the pick and roll. And what you get a lot out of and what's very important is watch the first big down. Okay, sorry, it's sunny here, so I can't really see my mouse. One second. All right, so this is very important when you play the side pick and roll and you reject. Look at number 35 underneath the hoop. We reject. He lifts up early, making his man be the low man on defense. That opens up oftentimes this little slot pass. We get a lot of layups out of that on rejects. Now, out of transition, ideally the pick and roll, this pick and roll is too high. It should be played below the free throw line. And so that's something you got to get your guards more committed at. And then you got to get them good at these little paint pull-up jumpers floaters. Same thing. This screen is too high for the side. But because it's in transition and this guard is back here, it's okay. But if he was already down and located, we want it played below the free throw line. Ryan. Yes. In this motion defense, what PNR is more difficult to defend, the high or the side? For me, it depends on it depends on what your strengths are. So in scouting, I will break down all of your pick and roll defense. Okay. And when I'm scouting you, I will try to recognize, are you a bad empty corner pick and roll defensive team? Okay. And then how do you play 
the side pick and roll defense compared to the high pick and roll defense? And then where do you try to put your weaker defender? So it, it depends opponent by opponent. Sometimes we will come in tactically with the game plan to attack an opponent with more side pick and rolls. Thank you. Okay, so now, and this is what I was talking about when this is still just the side pick and roll and the high pick and roll. But this is a set play that once you understand the foundation of the motion, all of your set plays can flow into it. So this is a set play. Now look at the floor balance. Okay, it ends up being the same, right? This guard's going to get to the corner. He's ready for the high pick and roll. He's ready for the high pick and roll, side pick and roll play. Now, this is the ideal way out of transition. He attacks the rim, forcing the guard to square him up. So if you play against a lot of ice pick and roll defense, and this is what I'm talking about, you got to be a threat. Because he's a threat and looks to attack, they can't ice the screen. So now it opens up, perfect angle on the deep corner pick and roll, pocket pass. Okay, this is a side out of bounds. So this is where it gets to it. What I said, you can run base on out of bounds, sideline out of bounds. We've got this set play, back screen. Look at the floor balance. It flows, side pick and roll to high pick and roll. Okay, baseline out of bounds. Read the floor balance. Watch the big underneath the hoop. He starts cutting under, becomes side pick and roll, floor balance to high pick and roll. Now, this becomes the motion offense. So that is just breaking down the high pick and roll reads and your side pick and roll reads. Now, this becomes the motion when you combine the two, okay? This is the system. Number one, the system is above everything and everyone. The system is our way of life on offense. The system is built to withstand any defense if the players respect the rules. Meaning, it doesn't matter if you show the pick and roll, trap the pick and roll, flat against the pick and roll, drop the pick and roll, switch the pick and roll, play zone defense. It doesn't matter. If you trust the system, the system will work regardless of your defense. We saw every type of defense and the system worked. Okay, now know your role in the system. The system is built to maximize player strengths, and minimize players' weaknesses. Don't show what you can't do. Keep it simple. Meaning, if you're not a short roll big, you don't short roll. You hard roll. If you're not a pick and roll player as a guard, you don't play the pick and roll. You play off DHOs, and you have three basic reads. Your goal in this offense is to create the advantage keep the advantage, and use the advantage. You never stop the flow of the offense without a tactical reason. So when you catch the ball, it's automatic. Another pick and roll is coming. Now you can look to catch and shoot, catch an attack, or play a pick and roll, but you cannot hold the ball. If the ball stops, the advantage stops. We do not want the defense to reset their shell defense. Okay, next, there are no personal agendas within the system. Every player on the team plays to the system. There's no personal agendas, okay? With the motion, it makes players, guards and bigs, defend in multiple pick and rolls. How many players do you have on your team that can and that want to play multiple pick and roll defense. They want to get through screens two, three times in the same possession, right? Maybe a guard plays good defense on the first screen, but chances are he's going to get clipped and create separation on the second screen. 
Maybe your big guy can defend one pick and roll well, but can he defend two or three pick and roll well in the same possession? And then if you're doing it for 40 minutes, can he defend multiple pick and rolls in one offensive possession for 25 minutes a game? At some point, he's going to get tired and break down, okay? All of your plays can flow into the system. Half-court sets, based on out-of-bounds, sideline out-of-bounds. Okay, and now you'll see this is the motion offense. This is the beauty of it, okay? So now you play the high pick and pop, pick and roll, short roll. So you got one screen. He short rolls. We hit him. Goes back. Second pick and roll. Short rolls. Second side, wide open three. And now you're just going to see this is read after read to where it builds. You'll see it flow. High pick and roll, short roll, second side pick and roll. And now you're forcing the same pick and roll defender to defend two pick and rolls in a row. And how many big guys are that good of defenders to defend two pick and rolls in a row like that, let alone three, four in the same possession? First pick and roll, second pick and roll, third. Okay, now what do you do with this will be when you have your hard rolling big. So now bang, your the screener now rolls instead of short rolls. The big underneath the defense lifts. That's how you get to the second side. His reads, which you can see here. He catches, reads the roller. Reads the weak side corner, nothing there. Now he opens up for DHO keeps. And this is your ball handling big. So this is what happens when your short roll big is the first big down the floor. And you can see why this is such a high assist offense. And look at how many players touch the ball. It keeps guys engaged. Everyone has ownership in the offense. Some players have more ownership than others, but everyone is a part owner. And as you can build, your bigs get really good at passing and looking for each other. And think about how many assists your team averages and how many assists your bigs average. Well, what if you could get your bigs to have two, three assists a game? How much better would your team ball movement be? Look at this. Okay, now you go side pick and roll to high pick and roll. Same thing. It just builds it read by read. Switching defense, throw it ahead, high low. Side pick and roll, high pick and roll. This is against zone defense. Now you'll see 
And what you get a lot out of this, and I'll break it down, is this. When you play that side pick and roll to high pick and roll, the natural tendency now for this player is to shrink the floor, to look to maybe tag, bump the roll, and you end up getting a lot of corner threes. And you also get a lot of attack to catches. So watch, they play the high pick and roll, bang, catch, reject, opens up. Okay, now, using the system to attack the defense, okay? As I said, what you'll see, you generate a lot of corner threes out of this offense, okay? We'll go through how to attack aggressive pick-and-roll defense, utilizing what I call throwbacks, attacking ice pick-and-roll defense, attacking switching defense, attacking zone. Now, you'll see... These are all of the different ways that you generate corner threes. And as I said, as you follow analytically where the NBA is advanced to the international ball, right, the below the break catch and shoot three is the highest percentage three in basketball. Your ideal goal is to take as many below the break catch and shoot threes in games as possible if you're trying to win the analytic game. Watch, watch the first side pick and roll player's defender. It's the natural habit for them to overextend. You get that a lot. Okay, here obviously it's out of position. He readjusts, same thing, short roll, kick out, corner three. Short roll, kick out, not there. Another corner pick and roll, penetration, corner three. So, Ryan, I was just going to say in Spanish what you've been saying in, the last, in this last couple of, 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 of films. Él está explicando que cuando, cuando se hace el pick en el ala y después se continúa con un pick en el alto, el high pick, va a abrir muchas opciones, específicamente ese tiro en la, en la esquina de tres porque la defensa usualmente del lado contrario va a encoger la, el área, va a entrar a la pintura para tratar de evitar el rol y esa esquina se va a, a, a estar abierta a un tiro fácil de tres o un short corner. Thank you, Ryan. No problem. Okay, now utilizing the system to attack aggressive pick and roll defense. Okay, so you'll watch this. And this is, we'll literally go in with a game plan saying we want to set two, three pick and rolls. Okay, watch. Aggressive pick and roll, they flat show. We come back, aggressive pick and roll, pretty good, flat show. Third time, they break down. <laughs> And so in coach's system, watch. They show. Okay, we short roll. We come back. Separation. Bad angle. Opens it up. Okay, ACB team. This is very good because he looks to reject the pick and roll. They play good defense. We use the screen one. Hard extended show. Okay, now if you look and we teach our guards – that they can hold on to the ball against a show for a rescreen. So now look at the separation. Big guy runs all the way back. He can't show aggressively two times in a row against that. Now they overextend, breaking down the defense, corner three. Okay, crucial point of the game. Time, clock, score. Down two, three minutes to go, fourth quarter. They show in the pick and roll. We short roll. We come back, we rescreen, separation, create the bucket. So, so, okay, Ryan, so Ryan, to be clear, you're, you're saying that every now and then we have to slow it down, don't be too aggressive, because they're going to keep reading it, correct? Yeah, we, we, we will go into the game tactically. Number one, we always want a lot of rescreens, but we will say specifically, 
if we see a, a pick and roll defender that we want to attack, we'll say, hey, you know, they're showing in the pick and roll, make him show on two or three pick and rolls in a row because by the second, third quarter, he's going to be tired and he's going to break down. Of course. Let, let me try to uh, uh, translate that. Yo le pregunté, obviamente, que en algún momento dado, eh, él dijo que obviamente estamos empujando la bola, pero a la misma vez él está diciendo que tenemos que también eh, disminuir la velocidad de juego de vez en cuando y esperar que cómo reacciona la defensa. Si la defensa, pues obviamente, está, está enseñando ese, ese, ese pick a, arriba o defender el pick, Vamos a dejarlo porque se va a cansar. Va a llegar un momento que se va a cansar. Y entonces en ese momento lo vamos a volver a atacar. Thank you, Ryan. No problem. Okay, so then... Ah, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. Ah, I messed it up. Okay, so now when you're playing against teams that, that are aggressive, okay, especially in the side pick and roll, All right? So you see here, based off the floor balance, when you show in a pick and roll like this, right, you're going to have the bottom defender try to stay in load to take away the roll. So the guy that's underneath the hoop, his defender would typically what? Stay and take care of the roll. Now you play the pick and roll, we advance it, okay? And now he's caught in between because we do so much second side pick and rolls, now he's in indecision where he has to think. I've got to get out there to be ready to show on the second side pick and roll. It, and it seems silly, and you can say it's bad defense, but it opens up a lot. It's very hard to, to show in the pick and roll against us. Now, utilizing throwbacks. This is very good when teams play aggressive defense. So you'll see they're aggressive on the ball. And it's also very good for a guard that isn't a great ball handler. So you'll see here, okay, they're being aggressive. We come off it. Okay, pretty good defensive position. The floor is crowded. We have nothing. We throw it. Now watch the guard's defender. Watch six defender. His natural human reaction is to relax. Now separation is created. And we get the shot we want. Same thing. Watch here. Aggressive pick and roll defense. Okay. We pick it up. He relaxes. Separation created. Okay, here we get it. There's no advantage on the short roll. Look at number two's defender. He relaxes. Throwback, rescreen, attack. Okay, same thing. Short roll, stunt, no advantage. His defender relaxes. So, and we'll teach the bigs, right? If you short roll, you catch it. If you don't have anything, Just throw back to the same guard. But we don't want the ball to stop moving. Okay, there you'll see it. And I've got a segment also for this ice defense. All right, so now you'll see them try to ice the pick and roll. Throw back. What does the guard do? He thinks he's done his job. He relaxes. Now you just play the pick and roll. Okay, same thing, attacking ice defense, how we want to attack it. Okay, here this is a set play. This is against Maccabi Tel Aviv. They weak the pick and roll. So same thing as an ice. Okay, we pass it. So they come off it, they're weak in it, trying to keep it on the same side. We hit the big, he relaxes, use the pick and roll. We just saw this. They ice it, relax, use the pick and roll. They ice the screen. 
Okay, good ice, no advantage. We throw it back, his defender relaxes. Now we're just right into the side pick and roll. And that's how you attack the ice, right here. Now they weak it, Maccabi Tel Aviv weaks it. We throw it and it's very, very difficult to weak or ice two pick and rolls. So here, bang, we get it. Now we just go to the other side, pick and roll where they can't ice it. Okay, now attacking, switching defense. Okay, here you'll see in a big part of attacking the switch, as we said, we don't want to stop the flow of the ball unless it's for a tactical reason. So almost what we prefer is attacking the switch on the second or third side. So you'll see they switch the high pick and roll. We lift up. Okay, the big that's lifting reads. First look, hit the big against the switch for the deep punch in. Second look, corner defender trying to come and help and triple switch out. Not there. We play this pick and roll. Okay, now what ends up happening is this defender will relax. Because you didn't attack him on the first side, he thinks he did his job. So we keep the pressure, we keep the flow, we get a good post up to attack the switch. Same thing, watch. Switch to pick and roll. Good angle of the screen, he's on his back. Ideally, we can throw it ahead here to the seal and it just goes big to big for a layup. We don't have it. Side pick and roll. They switch. Throw ahead, reading the high low. Now, side pick and roll. They switch. Okay, on front, we want that big guy to lift. We're reading. High low situation. Okay, this big, and this is so important in the offense. You have to teach them to constantly read corner defenders. So you can see he catches, he sees it, he's already reading, kick out corner three. Okay, now they switch to pick and roll. Okay, we're reading for the high low. He overcommits, worried about the high low. Now we get the three. Okay, and then obviously, you'll see they switch this pick and roll, right? And then we just try to bury guys and fire it down the hatch. This is more of a spectacular play than the offense. But big to big pass. Now, switching the side pick and roll. I actually prefer to attack switching defense with side pick and roll, but that's more my philosophy than Oded's. Bang, switch, keep them on your back. Nothing to do. Now attacking zone defense. And if you think about it, when we are attacking zone defense, oftentimes if you're not running a set play for a lob, a flare, okay, a three-point shot, you want to get the ball to the high post to your bigs. Well, because the ball, your bigs are used to having the ball in the high post off the short roll all the time, their decision-making and their comfort level against the zone is very high. Next, if you look at the floor balance, so they're in a zone. We play the side pick and roll, high pick and roll, okay? For coaches that play zone defense, how well and how great are your players' full understanding of your rules of playing against side pick and roll, high pick and roll, side pick and roll continuously? Okay, where they're helping from. And here you'll just see they try to overextend, take away the corner pass, catch, hit the dive. Now we run it again, high pick and roll. Okay, we catch, we look. We go second side, okay, they're running matchup zone. We just keep the flow. Eventually it breaks down. Okay, this is against Anwil. Side pick and roll, high pick and roll, side pick and roll, 
defense breaks down, high percentage shot. Then here you just get big in that high post. Right? And they just get comfortable playing out of that. And well, you can see they got the lead. They go to their zone. This is all the floor balance of the pick and roll offense. Now you can see they had the lead and we came back and won. Okay, now getting to the player development portion. So to get your players very good at this offense, you want to drill the reads in your player development. Every day that you do player development, do small groups, do it in the preseason, do it in the season, before practice, after practice, all year long. And how you build this offense, okay, through player development. One, you start with one player and a coach. Guard and a coach, big and a coach, doesn't matter. And you build the setups. The setups for the big coming into the screen, the angles of coming into the screen, and then the skills of the screen passing and scoring. Same thing with the guard. You drill with the guard. The setup that they have to have in the pick and roll, the angle coming off the pick and roll, and then the skills out of the pick and roll, the passing, the scoring. Okay, and this is where you incorporate all of your different type passes with both hands, left hand, right hand, early pass, Pocket pass, late pocket pass, late high pass, late lob pass, skip out pass, advanced pass, okay? And if they can't throw perfect passes, one on coach, they're not ready to advance. We would say strikes. They've got to be able to throw strikes, one on coach. When they can do that, one on coach. And that's also where you mix in all your crafty finishing. You go to two on O position two guards together two bigs together and you have them learn to work in a tandem you take the one verse coach and you build it with a teammate so now let's say you have a coach with two bigs the coach plays the pick and roll with one big and he passes either to the short roll and he's got to catch and score or he's got to catch and hit the big underneath the defense or he hard rolls and you hit the big lifting up to the elbow, and he's got to build the passes into the big hard rolling. So you get the bigs comfortable playing big to big on a tandem, okay? Then the offense is predicated on that big to big play. When they get good at passing to each other, throwing the right passes, you go two versus coach. You force the offense, the same offense, two bigs, to play against the coaches and make the correct read. So what do I mean? You have one coach play the pick and roll. And if you don't have enough coaches, you use the youth players. You have one coach play the pick and roll. One coach defend the pick and roll or youth player. One coach defend the big underneath the defense. And you hit the short roll and you force the short roll big to read. Is it a scoring read? Is it a passing read? What kind of pass is it? or you hit the big underneath the defense, okay, for a deep seal. Is it a scoring seal, passing seal? Then, when you get them to read versus the coaches or the youth players, or mock defense, you build in two versus o combo. Now you've got one guard, one big, to build the chemistry of the pick and roll reads and re-screens. And this is where you mix in all your pick and roll passes to the big, all your finishes, contact finishes, quick finish, high finish, Hook finish, same foot, same hand finish. 
okay? Then from that, you go two versus coach combo, force the offense to make the correct read against coach's mock defense. Three versus O combo, two guards and one big. Big's learning how to flow to the second side pick and roll. Then three versus coach combo, force the offense to make the correct reads against coach's mock defense. Three versus three live. Now you've got three offense, three defense, okay, and they've got to play live, and you force them to make the correct reads. Then you go four versus four live, two guards, two bigs. Now, in practice, we played as much or more four on four than we did five on five and just getting them reps. So if you had 12 players, we would do four on four on four, right, at the early part of practice, focusing on the offensive system so they could learn the right reads, and that's where we'd stop, correct, and teach. Now, some video of the skills you want to work on during that portion of one versus coach, two on O, oh, two versus coach, two on two, etc. I'll start with the bigs. This is where you work on. So you got one coach playing the pick and roll, the big short rolls, and you work on the reads out of it, catching, attacking, okay? If you got a coach or a player there with a pad, contact finishes. Okay, same thing. Here it goes. Shot fake attacks. Shot fake attack. Contact finish, inside hand. Now, if you got bigs that can't shoot threes, but they're good 15-footers, coach comes off the pick and roll. You also do it off re-screen, short roll jumper. Okay, then short roll finishes. Now, the big here that's set this screen, okay, he could literally catch and dunk a basketball. No post moves, no left hand, okay? And we drilled almost every day working on his weak hand. Catch it, early pocket pass, off the short roll, left hand finish, working on left foot, left hand, right foot, left hand, hook finishes with his left hand. So bang, catch it. That's skill development showing in the game. Okay, he didn't have that in his game. Here you'll see a nice finish, bang, short roll, Catch, cut, back, finish. Now you can see short roll. Watch with the quick inside. Bang, little scoop inside hand finish. And so that's where you mix in all of the different finishes that you work on with your bigs. You just do it out of pick and rolls instead of near the hoop. Now, if you work on short roll, because this is a read, and they play good defense on the short roll. Your big's got to know how to turn it into a post up. Short roll, good defense, bang, post up. And that's how we work on our post play. Now, then we work on decision making, okay? So, an example, if we're doing combo work, we might have coach, big, guard, coach, right? So, we have the coach play the pick and roll. He short rolls, and then he's got to read this defender. If he doesn't come all the way over, he catches and finish. He comes all the way over, he kicks out to the guard for the three. So that's where we work on decision-making and training decision-making. Same thing. We have coach to mock defense. Bang. He reads, comes all the way over. He's reading, makes that pass. And so we try to drill what the different potential reads and decision-makings they'll have in practice, or sorry, in a game, into practice. Rescreen, short roll, bang, kick out three. Ryan, I'm, I'm going to say that on a second in Spanish. Okay. Está hablando de que cuando se practica y se practica los, los tipos eh, driles con componentes que se utilizan en las prácticas, 
él practica la toma de decisiones. ¿Qué, qué, qué, qué oportunidades o qué, qué, qué decisiones tiene el, el jugador al, 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 al salir del pick, al salir del de second pick? ¿Qué decisiones hay? Y él hace eso con propósito. Todo lo que se practica, lo practica con un propósito para que ya sea normal para ellos reaccionar de, de acuerdo a, a, lo que, a, a lo que se le, se le, se le, se le vea defensivamente. Thank you, Ryan. No problem. Okay, so now skill work for the dunker big. Number one, this offense you have to really seal. And we teach them to seal to score, but also to seal to create for their teammates. We work a lot on seals, deep seals. We want those guys, this defender tends to relax, so you can get a lot of good, easy buckets. And we work on them in our combo work, guard big, sealing off for the guard to finish. And then sealing off for the guard to finish, that big gets around, bang, drop off. And so we drill for these decision makings. Then we work on actual dunker finishing. Right, being deep to that baseline and then mixing in your different type finishes. Look at them, deep to the baseline, swing through step, finish. I apologize for where that's placing. And then dunker decision making. So same thing, we'll work. Coach. Big, big, right? And then we work on those passes, big to big. Then we work out of the lifting big. Okay, catching, shooting. whether it's a three or 15-footer. You can run this offense if you have stretch bigs. But we work on lifting the footwork into it, into that elbow jumper, then finishing, catching, reading, then attacking. We're always looking to catch to pass first. Catch, look to pass. Then decision making. We try to work on a lot of DHO keeps, especially from the high short roll to the side. And what do they do if they play good defense on the DHO keep? We build it into a post up. So bang, read DHO, it's not there, we misread it, flow into a post up. Okay. And, and, and for everyone that is reading, if they don't know, DHO is the dribble handoff. Cuando, cuando entregas la bola, in the hand of al jugador. Next up for the guards. What we work on with the guards, starting one on oh, pick and roll setup. Okay, watch the guy with the ball. He attacks, he pops back, creating separation. Okay, reject, finish, kick out, whatever the decision making is. Now watch him, backs him down, creates an angle, opens up his hips, reject. Cut him off, better angle for the pick and roll. So we work on different type of setups, live ball and out of triple threat. And so there 
you know what you missed it's just another way of setting up watch the hesitation okay so watch when he brings the ball down squares his hips opens it up to the screen hesitate son of a bitch sorry okay hesitates now if you look at his hips his eyes his face his shoulder he hesitates and what the hesitation sells is the opportunity to reject the pick and roll right now he's in perfect position to use the pick and roll reject the pick and roll he hesitates and he uses it instead of rejecting it and that's where we try to shift the defense in our setups right attacks better angle and we get to all of the different opportunities right on our setups now as i said we want to reject the pick and roll so we work on different reads that are rejecting the pick and roll finishing pull up jumpers threes kickouts decision making and we'll work on it knowing what your pick and roll defense is during the season so if we got two days to prepare for you and you're icing the pick and roll and my skill development that I do before and after practice, I take the guards through what their reads will be against your pick and roll defense. And then we mix in all our crafty finishes off all this. Pick and roll threes is something you want to do with your guards every day. Verse under, okay? Verse getting caught on the screen. Maximizing footwork and balance to turn it into a higher percentage shot. Okay, now working on pick and roll threes when they get smacked or hung up on the screen. I will say as we're putting together our team, that is a skill we look for in our guards also. Guys that can ideally shoot off the dribble some. They don't have to be amazing. They just have to be a threat. And then ideally we develop them into better off the dribble shooters. Okay, so now you got pick and roll. Paint jumpers, pull-up jumpers, floaters. Okay, as I said, very, very, very important in this offense. For your guards, ball pickups. So watch here. He comes off. Okay, notice where he picks the ball up. Down near his shin because there's a slap-down defender because he played the side pick and roll too high. So he should have brought the ball down deeper. He didn't. As a result, it's bad spacing. So we have to really get good at this. Ball pickup. He brings it low like James Harden. And we work on these different type pickups. Okay, here, watch. Bank brings it low and out like James Harden. Here you'll see the hesitation. So watch here. He comes off the side, pick and roll. It's bad spacing. Watch his hesitation. Right? That defender relaxes a little bit, and then he knifes through the spacing. And then all your different pick and roll finishing. You know, when, when we try to finish with our guards, I do it all off different pick and roll reads. Screen, re-screen, rejects. Okay? Same foot, same hand finish. High off the glass finish. Bar finishes, inside hand finishes, quick finishes, reverse finishes. I mix it all into the pick and roll reads. Okay, and then most important decision making. We work on the skills one on O, okay, lobs. This we obviously don't do one on O, we do. Combo work, garden big, with a coach defending it. But we got early lobs, late lobs, okay, roll passes, off the jump, 
late delivery. Late delivery off the jump. Okay, shot fake, pocket passes. And then we work a lot on weak hand. We try to drill this stuff. Wrap arounds, hit ahead, hook passes. This is the player development portion. If you can get your guards to improve their one hand, weak hand passing, your offense is gonna flow way better. So this is what we'll do in two on O with two guards. We'll have a coach set a pick and roll, right? They gotta throw a strike on the kick out for a three. Okay. Now, uh, any questions I'm happy to answer. Also, I'll just pull this up and, and so everyone can see it. It's just once again, my email address, ryanpanone at gmail.com. If you want this presentation, happy to send it to you. Okay, I also uh, can send anything else anyone else wants, but, but if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Ryan, um, I have a question. Uh, in, in this last portion of the drills, you mentioned that that you drill a lot the four and four and four, which it's it, it, it's it's great to do. Um, but you did mention that you did it early in the practice. Um, something specific about that? Why you did so so early in the practice? Yeah. And, and let me translate that before I before you answer. Yo le acabo de preguntar que él acaba de mencionar en esta última porción de los drills que él trabaja mucho el cuatro para cuatro para cuatro. Pero mencionó que lo hacía a principio de práctica. Yo le estoy preguntando por qué específicamente al principio de la práctica. Ryan. So, a, a big reason why we do it earlier in the practice is because it's four on four on four. It's a little bit slower tempo, right? Because four guys are always staying on a hoop, waiting for the ball to come back to them. So, typically, for our practice, we would do skill work pre-practice, watch film, come out, warm up with our strength coach, do some form of pick and roll passing, you know, guards, bigs, 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 ball handling, passing. Then we would do five on O, oh, and then we would do four on four on four, because what we didn't want is super high intense five on five, and then we slow it down to four on four. So we wanted to build up the pace of practice to five on five where it was super intense and, and uh, uh, competitive. Try to uh, give me a second. I have another question. Um, hold on. Trying to get a little bit more explanation here. Do you manipulate the, the defensive uh, the defensive coverage, for example, like the Spain PNR that they use? Yeah, so we'll just uh, – let's just say teams that try to play the, the stack pick and roll, Spanish pick and roll, we'll just slip that guy out early, the, the guard uh, that's set in the back screen. Oftentimes we'll slip them out early if they're showing in the stack pick and roll in the Spain pick and roll and we'll throw it ahead so it goes guard to guard to big in a triangle pass. And then if they're not showing in the, the stack pick and roll, right, we'll, we'll try to set more of a contact screen instead of a slip. Great. I think that is all for now, um, Brian. I, I, we appreciate, once again, we appreciate um, the, the, the work and you joining us in this um, like I said to you, humble prayer that we have done for our people in Puerto Rico and around the world that we have people that have been joining us from Spain and Argentina, Slovakia and all parts of the world. I think that they knew that you were joining us and Slovakia joined in. Um, they, uh, so I appreciate you working with us, appreciate your time. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Estoy dando las gracias a Ryan por, por, por su no participación con todos nosotros y le agradecemos que esté con nosotros. If anyone has any questions, if you have more questions that I didn't get to, feel free to reach out and, and uh, I'll be happy to answer anything and help in any way that I can. I appreciate that. And uh, our next session is at 8 o'clock tonight, um, Eastern Time. So thank you, Ryan, again. Enjoy the Florida sun, all right? Thank you. Have a good one. I appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ryan, thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. See you later, guys.